Thank you, God. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord, everybody. Yeah. Glory, 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 glory. We bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, oh God. Glory to your name, Jesus. Yes, God. We exalt your name, oh God. We give you glory, oh God. There is none like you in all the earth, oh God. Hallelujah. We thank you for the opportunity to enter into your presence with thanksgiving. Into your courts with praise, oh God. We are thankful unto you. We bless your holy name. For you are good and your mercy endure forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank Thank you, God. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. We bless your name, oh God. Thank you. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, glory, glory. Hey, glory. We bless your name, oh God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to the Catalyst at FDT this morning. Why don't you just shout out new this morning? We thank you, oh God. And we we have just a little bit of new format this morning. So before uh, we jump into worship, Sister Smith is coming on to pray us in this morning. Are you ready? Come on, stand up on your feet. Make a joyful noise unto our God as we prepare to go into his presence this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, God, we thank you for the opportunity to come together this morning to worship you, oh, God. We thank you, Lord. We may be in various places, oh, God, but your spirit abides with in us, oh God. And so God, we thank you this morning for your grace. We thank you for your mercy, oh God. We thank you for your peace. We thank you for your wisdom today, God. We thank you for your justice today, oh God. Even in the midst of turmoil, oh God, we thank you that you have the peace that passes all understanding, oh God. And so God, we thank you, Lord God, that your spirit would move, oh God, throughout this service and that we would move, oh God, and that the word of God would go to the four corners of the earth today oh god that someone be healed someone that's listening and watching this broadcast today let them be healed oh god let them be delivered today oh god let them be saved today oh god we thank you lord we ask you holy spirit that you would have your way today that you would breathe on us oh god that you would refresh us god that you would renew us that you would restore us that you would revive us oh god we thank you lord as we've been crying out to you to heal the land god only like you can oh god we thank you oh god right now for your divine protection we thank you for those that are on the streets today god we thank you for those that are whatever they're doing oh god and whatever their cause may be god we thank you that you put a hedge of protection around them god we thank you lord that your truth and your word will prevail oh god we thank you lord that you are the king of kings and the lord of lords and we thank you for the opportunity to come to your house in the various forms that we're doing this morning that we may worship and that we may bless you that we may lift you up today oh god give us wisdom knowledge and understanding today god let us have compassion oh God. And even God, when we don't see eye to eye, Lord God, let us have your viewpoint, oh God. We thank you because your word is true, oh God, and that your righteousness reigns forever and forever. And so God, we thank you today. We give you the glory, God. We give you honor, God. We give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, God. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
So good morning, Catalyst family and friends. Welcome to another day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I'm gonna be reading our scripture today. It's gonna to be coming from Psalms chapter five. Psalms chapter five, verses one through eight. I'll be reading out of the KJV, uh, King James Version. You can use the version of your choice. And it reads as follows. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God. For unto thee will I pray. My voice shalt thou hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. For thou art not a God that have pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. Thy, the foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing. The Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. Mm. But as for me, huh. I will come into the house in the multitude of thy mercy, and in thy fear will I worship toward thy holy temple. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of mine enemies. Make thy way straight before my face. And may the Lord add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his precious word. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. You've got to switch to me. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Said, enter to his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts this Sunday morning with praise. Hallelujah. Get your tambourines, get your minds right. Hallelujah, for this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Well, I feel like giving God the glory, all of the glory, all of the glory. Well, I feel like giving God the glory. He has been so good to me. Get your tambourines. Well, I feel like giving God the praise, all of the praise, all of the praise. I feel like giving God the praise that he has been so good. He has been so good, so good, so good. He has been so good, so good, so good. He has been so good to me. I get joy when I think about what he done for me. Joy when I think about what he done for me. I get happy when I think about it, what he done. Happy when I think about what he done for me. I get joy when I think about it, what. I get joy when I think about what he done for me. I get joy when I think about it, what it done. Joy when I think about all oh, this power, 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 Lord, power, power, Holy Ghost, power, power, Lord, power, 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 Holy Ghost, power, power, Lord, power, Jesus. Power, power, Holy Ghost, power, power. What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? Who do you call when times are wrong? Who do you call when you need help? Say, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 my way over. 
Recognize the blood of the Lamb. For there's power in the blood of the Lamb. And so we just want to go over. Oh, there is power. Power. From the very 
for the blood of your son, Jesus. We thank you, oh God. We bless you. Come on, let's, uh, Sister Zoe's not here today, but we're gonna make these decrees and then we're gonna jump right into the word of the Lord this morning. Come on, with me, after me, say today, today. with one voice, with one we voice. reverence and worship you, Lord. The atmosphere is charged with your grace as we welcome you into this place. So we declare, these things over this body of believers. We declare strongholds of the mind and heart be destroyed in the name of Jesus. We declare body restoration and divine health over our families. We declare fiscal order and accountability that your kingdom work may be performed as we live free of debt. We declare with wisdom 
and discernment are increased as we fulfill our assignment for this season. We declare all demonic connections, contracts, assignments, and allegiances made intentionally or unintentionally to the past season, year, or generation be renounced and destroyed in the name of Jesus. We decree activation of our faith on a dynamic level. We pray that our eyes, our ears, and our hearts are prepared for what you want to do for us, to us, and through us. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we thank you for these decrees this morning. We thank you for your word. Holy Spirit, have your way this morning. Speak to us. Oh God, let our eyes be open, our ears be attentive to that, that you will speak to us as individuals and that, that you will speak to us corporately, oh God. Oh God, that we remember who we are and whose we are. And we're not moved by what we see. We're not moved by what we feel. But God, we rest in your sovereign authority and ability. And we thank you, God, that we rest in who you are, the all-seeing, all-knowing, all-wise, all-powerful God. We bless you and we exalt you today. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, why don't you grab your Bible? Go with me over to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Go over with me to Hebrews chapter 10. Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name, Jesus. And I want you just to read with me. Uh, you can read with me just one verse. Verse chapter uh, number 23. Verse 23, are you ready? Let me know when you're ready. You ready? You ought to say ready. Just comment ready, 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 ready. Hallelujah. It says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful, that promise. For he is faithful, that promise. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering for he is faithful that promise hallelujah hallelujah i just want to talk just a few minutes about holding fast to our profession uh, your profession the thing that you you speak out of your mouth that we say is is what we uh, what we believe is what we stand on our decrees we say we believe these things and so what i'm finding out and i, I was talking to pastor uh, over the past couple of days and i said you know uh, the scripture tells us that out of the issues of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so we're finding out that even though there are some, some of us that are acting, our profession is a little bit different from what's coming out of our mouth. Uh, what we're standing on is a little bit different. And so how do we tell the difference? How do we know what's what? What's really coming out of your mouth is, is, is uh, uh, what we really believe because the scripture talks about what's in the heart. And so it's important that we begin to guard our hearts, that we begin to uh, stand on the word. And before we can just begin to open our mouth and let things flow out, out of our emotions and out of our feelings, we got to grab a hold to the word of God and remember who we are. We have to remember who we are, who we confess to be, who we profess to be, who we say we are. We say that we are Christians, that we are anointed like Christ. We say that we are, are his children, children of God. And so there's a certain way that we should be acting, that we should be responding. And in, and in we, certain things we should be saying, there should be some things that we take to hold of the scripture before we just go all out, right? It does not negate the fact that things are happening in our everyday world. It does not affect, uh, uh, negate the fact that things are happening in our lives. But at the end of the day, mostly we should do it at the beginning of the day. If you remember who you are, remember who you are, remember who you are. And then when you begin to respond, then you will take some, some thought to how the response happened, to who you are, to how you carry yourself. And so... Uh, 
uh, Hebrews chapter 23 tells us to hold fast to our profession of to the profession of our faith without wavering. I was fixing my coffee this morning and I was saying, you know, a lot of times we use scripture. We use scripture in the place where we want it to be. We use it to make us feel comfortable in certain situations. And when we feel uh, that comfort is no longer uh, available or we feel that uh, the thing doesn't apply, then we, we don't use scripture. But I'm talking about holding fast to your profession. If the word works in one part, then it ought to be your overarching uh, foundation of what you use for your everyday life. I can't say forgiveness. Uh, I forgive because Jesus first forgave me uh, that while I was yet sinner, uh, Christ died for me and that I forgive. And then I pick situations to which I forgive. We can't pick and choose when the word, it, it, we should put it into play. It said, verse 24, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. That we ought to be provoking un one another unto love and unto good works. Yes, we can, we can stand uh, in a place of intercession. Yes, we can stand and we can do something well. Uh, we can uh, join together, but we ought to be provoking one another to love and to good works. Uh, we're talking about holding fast to what you believe in. This is a time where our faith is on trial. Here's a time where, our, where, where we're being tested on what we really believe. Do you understand that every trial, every test, every situation that you're put in is a test of your faith? It's a test to say, do I really believe what I profess? Do I really believe that God is who he say he is? Do I really believe that Jesus died for all? Do I really believe that the word is able to change? Do I really believe that after this, we, uh, if we live right, if we live right, if we live according to what is written in the scriptures, that there is a crown and a throne. See, everybody want to skip to the crown, but don't nobody want to do the living. You got to do the living first. You got to do the living first. Let us draw near. Verse 22 told us, let us draw near with a true heart. First thing we got to do is examine that heart. What's in there? And then you know what? Situation, circumstances, when our faith is on trial, it allows us to examine what's really in our heart. I don't know about you, but I've learned a lot about me during quarantine during being stuck in the house with everybody who lives here. Not that I don't see them every day, but I'm not forced to be in their presence 24 uh, seven. They, every, the kids go to school, husband goes to work, uh, everybody leaves. And normally I'm here all by myself working. And so when you're forced to be in the presence of somebody, I hear you, amen. When you're forced to be in the presence, it begins to reveal things, not about them, but about you. So if you haven't learned anything about yourself, how you operate, uh, then, then maybe you're missing the lesson. It says, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Not with a half assurance, not with a little bit of assurance, a, a full assurance of our faith that we understand what's happening in our world, but yet we rest in the sovereign ability of God. Full assurance says, I may feel a certain way. I may be sick in my body, but I know what the scripture says. Full assurance say, I may feel like I'm about to lose my mind, but I understand that Jesus is a mind regulator. Full assurance says that it doesn't matter what's happening, that if I lose it all, I gain, it is better to, to lose your soul and gain God than to gain the world and lose your soul. Full assurance of your faith. You got to know what you believe in. You got to know who you believe in. You have to know his capabilities. You don't just put trust in any and everything. Uh, Pastor and I were talking this morning about how uh, people don't do research anymore. Uh, scroll down your time, your news feed at any given time, you'll see articles that that will make you mad. But if you click on some of those articles, they're written by by uh, fake sources or they're from ten years ago. What I'm saying is this: 
is that you got to have full assurance of your faith. When the when when Jesus said, uh, when the Bible talks about the word being this, that God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, what better source to trust than he that does not change? The world is ever changing, minute by minute, second by second. But what better source to trust than the one who doesn't change? He who does not change. Uh, I work... Uh, Part of my job is in the morning that I normally come in and I read the news. Uh, normally I would read the local news or listen to the local news. But what I'm finding out now is that the local news is now delayed. And so uh, I've had to go with uh, faster sources because see, they have to wait to get to the source and they have to wait till it prints and they have to wait. But let me tell you about Twitter. Twitter is a quick update. And before they post it in the local news, I've already uh, schooled my team on what's going to be happening for the day. And so what I'm saying is why not trust the source that's already tweeted what we're going to be dealing with. We looking at it like some great and grand thing happened and the scripture has already told us in the last days, these are the things that we would encounter. So when we begin to look at the news, none of these things should move us. None of these things should move us. We should be able to flip to the page and say, yep, that's about where we are. Now, the general overarching thing may, may uh, uh, appeal to your flesh, but in your spirit, man, you should be able to say, oh, okay. Remember the Pharisees kept telling, uh, kept telling, asking Jesus, Jesus, can you show us the time, sign of the time? Can you show us the sign of the time? And Jesus said, listen, you keep asking me to show you the sign of the time. When the, when the sky is cloudy and the, 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 the clouds are hanging low, you say, oh, it's going to rain. Uh, for some of y'all, y'all say, oh, my knee aching. So it's going to rain. Oh, I feel this in my sacroiliac. And so this going to happen. Oh, the sun going to be, you can judge everything else. Don't, 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 don't negate you in the word to judge where we are and when you do have full assurance of your faith have full assurance of your faith and it says having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water what is that pure water that water is the water of the word wash your conscience your thought pattern you gotta shift what you think you can't jump in because everybody else is jumping in. You got to stand back, watch the situation, feel the feeling, choose the action. And then operate in a way that is conducive to what we should operate as those who stand on the word of the Lord. Having your heart sprinkled from an evil conscience. Because the things that are happening in your world will make you feel like doing something evil. He's saying, clear your heart of the matter. And let your bodies be washed with water, with the water of the word. Get in the word and find out what can be done, what is conducive. Yes, you can pray, but there are other things that you can do. Find out where, what, Lord, ask a question. What would you have me to do, Lord? What would you have me to do? It says to let us consider one another to provoke to love and the good work. Uh, make sure that you're provoking others to love and to good, good works. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Now, somebody just said, well, we can't go to church. Right here. There are those of us that I can probably uh, think of. Uh, <laughs> you have no excuse. No, nobody has any excuse anymore not to forsake the assembling of the brother because you can do it from your living room in your pajamas and nobody will know that you did it in your pajamas, but you got the word of the Lord. You got the marching orders. If, what we're finding out is that some of us see how the revelation happened when you were uh, when you were stuck in the house. We're finding out uh, some of us that our religion or that our faith in God was tied to 2063 Flat Shows Road. And if you cannot worship and lift up your hands at said address where you're sitting, and if you cannot open up your mouth and pray at said address where you're sitting, if you cannot call, invoke the presence of the Holy Ghost, then, then we're learning something about ourselves, not forsaking the assembling of the brothers, of ourselves together, that we, we have more opportunity now to get in the word than we ever had before. More opportunity to, to connect 
than we ever had before. As a matter of some is it said, because there are some that are just not concerned. Oh, we're not having service in the building. Then their faith went out the door. Their beliefs went out the door. They may still be saying, I'm a Christian, but they're no longer connecting. Understand that connecting brings power. Connecting and getting the word of the Lord strengthens your inner man. Yes, there are things that you should do on your own, but something happens when the word of the Lord is going forth. You can share the word of the Lord like never before. You're not confined to getting one person on the phone. You can make a post and reach millions all over the world. You can invite people to church like never before. The word of the Lord can go forth like never before. So we don't have and in any excuse, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a matter of some is. Don't do it just because everybody else do it. Oh, well, we we uh, can't go into the building. So so I'm, uh, I see more posts of people more excited to get back into the building. Hey, have you not, in three months, you have not brought the building to your house by now? You are the building. You are the building. As the manner of, it says, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as ye see the day approaching. As ye see the day approaching. In other words, I've already told you what's to come. So you know what you're looking for. You know what to expect. So none of this should be throwing you off guard. Everybody's all surprised by the things that's happening in 2020. And I'm flipping over in Revelations and going, oh, okay. I see. This is where we are. I'm flipping over and seeing where we are and saying, okay, Lord, what would you have me to do? What would you have us to do? Here's our question to the Lord. Look what it says. So much the more as you see the evil day approaching, as you see the day approaching, what day? The shifts. What are we exhorting each other to do to make sure that we are living up to what we believe in, to make sure that we actually believe what we say? And for those that don't believe, to present Jesus, to present Jesus to them. You can't beat them over the head with the word, but you can admonish them in the word. Admonish them in the word. Admonish them in the word. Offer them the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Offer them a better way. You can't make them, but you can present it. It says, for if we willfully sin, if we sin willfully after that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. If we willfully sin, if you just decide you're going to, okay, this is who I say I am, but this is what I'm going to do. After you have received the knowledge of the truth, it's not just enough to, uh, I love, uh, when I was younger, I used to watch G.I. Joe, and G.I. Joe had this, this slogan. He said, knowing is half the battle. It's not enough just to know. Uh, we say we know God. We say we love God. We say we read the Bible. We quote a lot of scripture. It's not just enough to know. James said, we can't just be hearers. We got to be doers. We got to be doers. We got to put the thing in action. God is not going to ask you how many scriptures you know. He's, he already knows them. They're his words. He's not going. Uh, I, and before you say, uh, Pastor T, God says, put me in remembrance of my word. He didn't tell you to do that because he forgot. He told you to do that to make sure you knew what he said. He's saying, listen, if you keep on doing the thing that you know is wrong, if you keep taking my place, we said, if we sin willfully what is the sin you putting your happy self in his place if you just continue to do that after that you have received knowledge that you have received an understanding of where we are that you have received an understanding of who he is and you say it out of your mouth this is who i say he is you sing it out of your mouth this is who i say he is and then you continue uh, uh to put yourself on the throne Operate your day how you need to do it, how you want to do it, and go about doing things your own way. He says, if we willfully do that, after we have received the knowledge of truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sin. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour out the adversaries. 
In other words, that there's a punishment for it. And we don't pray. I know, I know, I know. They don't like to say heaven and hell in church anymore. But here's the season where we better start saying there's a heaven and there's a hell because we have uh, begun to grab a hold uh, to the fact that everybody goes to heaven. And that's, that's, that's not just, let's just tell ourselves the truth. It's not happening. That's not according to the word of the Lord. And what is he asking us to do? He's asking us to say that to people. I know. Oh, well, you're judging me. No, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to make sure that your everlasting is better than your current situation, that your now is better than your current situation, because everlasting is way longer than time. Eternity lasts way longer than this little bit of space of time that you're in, that you're complaining about everything. But if you can just endure time, then we can make it to the everlasting. But the thing is, how you living in the time is going to determine what the everlasting is like. Woo! So how you living? What's your profession? How you living? He's saying, listen, I'm talking, and I, I, this is what I, I love to make sure that we understand that these scriptures are not written to those that are sinners. These scriptures are written to the church. So we telling the church people that you got to hold on to your faith, that you got to make sure your heart is pure. Why? Because it's easy to get entangled into the affairs of this world. Easy. Easy. It is easy to willfully sin. It's easy. You're in flesh. You're going to feel things. Your feelings going to get all in the way. You're going to be all upset. You're going to be. Mm -hmm. He said, if you willfully do it, then that puts you in the wrong space of eternity. So we, we're living to live again, are we not? See, you got to begin to ask yourself some questions. Why do I do what I do? When I say I believe God, what does that really mean to me? When I say Jesus is Christ and that he died for our sins, what does that mean to me? When I die, what happens? You got to ask yourself these questions as Christians because it, the word Christian is thrown around. And so you got to make sure that your concept, your thought pattern, your heart thoughts regarding the word lines up with the word. Because at the end of the day, there's no time for choices. The choices happen now. The choices are happening now. And every choice that you make affects not only your space and time, but it affects your eternity. Every choice that you make, every choice that you make, every choice, every choice, every choice. So, I leave you with verse 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. That means we can't be tossed this way, moved that way, this way, this way, and all of that. Why are we, why are we doing what we're doing? And when we find out that we're in a place that is wrong, how fast is it taking us to fix it? How fast are we moving to, to get in the word and to hear from the Lord and allow the Holy Spirit to lead us to fix it? Or do we just keep living in that same situation, same situation, no conviction? Here's why you got to get in the word. Because the word of the Lord should bring, uh, when it talks about uh, having full assurance uh, in your, uh, having a true heart. And having your heart sprinkled from an e evil conscience, what happens when you get in the word is that the word should bring about a conviction and the conviction should bring about a conversion. The word should bring about a conviction and the conviction should bring about a conversion. In other words, I heard the word. I found where I was in the word. The word changed my heart regarding the situation and the, the change in my heart brought about an action. Jesus says to Peter, here's where you are currently, that you're going to deny me three times. But listen, when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. He understood that although Peter was on his side and he was with him and he was like, ain't nobody going to do nothing to you. And he knew he had been walking with him. But in Peter's heart, 
when he, when he was faced with the things that were surrounding him in his space in time, he denied Christ. But then a conviction came after that cock crowed for the third time. Whatever your situation is, when the cock crows and you are now, oh my God, here's where I am. When you realize the space that you're in, when you realize that what you're doing does not line up with the word, Peter realized. And when he was converted, when he changed his action, you'll find it over in Acts. He began to preach the word of the Lord relentlessly. Mm -hmm relentlessly so what we're looking for is when we're holding fast to our profession without wavering stop moving all around let the word hit you so that you can be convicted and then be converted and when you are converted strengthen your brethren hold fast to your profession father we thank you for the word of the lord this morning holy spirit we we just give you a uh, a uh, uh, full reign begin to speak to each individual that is listening to this broadcast for if we would tell ourselves the truth we will know exactly where we stand if we tell ourselves the truth that that right now god allow that truthful moment that we, we won't be like peter and begin to 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 pull back from you but even now i'm saying tell my disciples and peter that we understand the place that you're in, but don't stay there. Tell my disciples and Peter. That's what Jesus said right after when he when he was after he was crucified and he was back. He says, "Listen, go tell my disciples and Peter," because he knew that Peter was necessary. Peter, he knows that you're necessary. You messed up. You messed up. You did the wrong thing. You've been doing the wrong thing. And today, he said, "Come." Come, come, come. Return back. Now is the time to, to get on the right path like never before. If that's you, come on, let's pray. Father, we thank you. Today, we pray, God, that you would examine my heart. Examine my heart, God. Let me see what you see. That today, conviction will bring about conversion. And that conversion will bring about action. That no longer will I be a hearer of the word, but a doer also. That my life be surrendered to your word. That your word be my governing authority. That Jesus be the king of my life. That my eternity may be with you. If you prayed that prayer, I believe that you have, have, have taken the first step and it's just the first step. Now you gotta begin to get into your word and you gotta begin, maybe right now you can't go into a church, but you can scroll your newsfeed and find a Bible teaching church. How do you know it's Bible teaching? Open the Bible with them and begin to read with them and ask the Holy Spirit to lead you to which place you ought to be. Hallelujah. Thank you, oh God. We bless you and exalt you on today. I pray that you grab what you needed out of the word of the Lord on today. Hold fast to your profession. This is not the day for wavering. This is a day for knowing what you believe and acting on what you believe. We can't be wavering. This is not the time to be trying to decide. This is the time to be uh, making the the. Uh, making the decision and standing on it amen amen pastor is coming and we're going to prepare to have our communion if you have not uh grabbed a hold of your communion uh goods why don't you take a few seconds to go and get that while pastor is coming
Praise the Lord, everybody. Did the word hit you where you needed it to? I, I, I think that sometimes we want it to hit us in a certain way to make us feel good. And then sometimes it hits us and it hurts because it hits our toe or it hits us in our comfortable place, that place that we've been sheltering and covering and then it makes it uncomfortable for us to continue. But here's what I love about when the, Lord, when the word hits us in that place that we ain't ready to be hidden, that it helps us to get a mental and a spiritual check Thank you, Lord, for helping me to protect that area. Help me, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for helping me to get aligned vertically with you. Lord, help me for help me. Thank you for helping me to see the areas that I need your attention and the deficiency in. And so we have to absolutely hold fast to our confession. We have to make what we speak be what we live first, because uh, like Pastor T always says, preaching is what you do, not what you say. I love the fact that the Lord has given us this opportunity to be able to be together. And so we've been giving you a few minutes. Hopefully you got yourself a, a cup and some some uh, and some bread here. I'm gonna share with Pastor T over here. Uh, but right here I have, um, I have uh, I've got some materials for communion. And, and before we take it, <clears throat> I want to remind you that every time that we do this, this is affirming our confirmation or our confession. When it says hold fast to your confession of faith, it's believing that he was, that he is, and that he is to come. That there's no limit, there's no boundary, that there's no jurisdiction that is not under his rule. And so every time that we take this, it reminds first all of heaven, earth, and the enemy that one, we are in alignment and that we are submitting our lives unto him as he is our king and our, and our glory, but also that we have not forgotten the work that he did because in every heart, there was a cross and a throne. And if we sit on the throne, then he's on the cross. But if we take up our cross and follow him, then he gets to sit on the throne of our hearts. And every time that we take communion, it's to remind us that he, get, that he gets the opportunity to sit on the throne of our hearts. I want to first encourage you to get your bread. And when Jesus takes his takes the uh, communion with his, uh, well, actually, it's the Passover he's taking with the disciples. For us, it's communion. But when he takes the Passover with the disciples, he goes into an upper room, a room that was prepared for them, and he takes the bread and he begins to break it. And he says, this is my body, which is broken for you. Um, I, I, I love to do this in front of our church family, just because it is should be a reminder to us. It's very easy to serve it already prepared, but I like the idea of us being able to remember to see that just as his natural bread was broken, his body was broken for us, that he suffered injustice, that he suffered accusations, that he suffered being mocked, scourged. He suffered being the one who did not have access to resources. Remember when the disciples said, well, I want to follow you. And he said, you know, uh, foxes have holes, birds have nests, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. In other words, I, I don't follow me because you think I got stuff. Don't follow me because you think I, I'm, I'm affluent because I have riches. It, it, I love the fact that he was acquainted with what it felt like to be the common man. But as the common man, he suffered at the hands of the authorities that ruled at the time. And he was beaten. The scripture says beaten to a point where he didn't even look like a man anymore. When we talk about his body being broken, I need you to remember that every picture, that every visual that you see of injustice and brutality, he suffered it also, which means we serve a God who understands what it feels like. We serve a God who knows. However, the scripture said that he did not say a mumbling word, that he did not render them evil for evil. He didn't take up arms against them. But what he did, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He gave them the opportunity to partake in his suffering so that he said, if you partake in my suffering, then you'll also partake in my glory. So if you have your bread, I encourage you to take ye and eat all of it. Thank you, Lord. Scripture says that after he took the bread and he took a cup, he said, this cup is a new testament in my blood. In other words, I'm making a new agreement. I'm establishing a new order 
of establishing new rules. Social reform happens in this cup. <laughs> I'm saying it again slow. Social reform happens with this covenant. Because at the moment that we choose to allow him to be our Lord and Savior, we receive his, watch his culture and his kingdom. Here is where the reform happens. Because if it doesn't first happen in the hearts of men, if it doesn't happen in the minds of men, it will never happen in the earth. The earth has been given dominion to men. But if men's hearts and minds have not been conquered by the culture of the kingdom of God, they will forever be turmoil because it is born in sin, shaped in iniquity. It desires its own way. It desires what it sees as justice. But here's the thing that I love about the Lord. He says, vengeance is mine, save the Lord. I'm not saying that we don't do our part. What I am saying is, the Lord is the one keeping score. The one is the Lord who's he's the one that's keeping track. And when we allow him to be the to be the answer for our for our reform, when he says this cup is a new testament in my blood, he's saying, I'm going to create a new order, I'm going to create a new way. And if you will choose to submit your life, if you'll choose to follow my direction, if you'll choose to follow my lead, that I will create, I will put in, not just put in place in you, in your hearts and in your minds, what's necessary for this season. But I promise you that change comes, that the land gets healed when you first remember who I am. So if you got your cup, I encourage you to get it. Take it and drink all of it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for being our light. Thank, Thank you, Lord, you, Lord, for being our covering. Thank you, Lord, for being our protection. Thank you, Lord, also for being our Lord and King. Thank you, God, for giving us wisdom, Lord, for true wisdom that aligns us not just with the culture of the kingdom of heaven, but helps us to be able to be an example and a model of you in earth, Lord, help us to show the world and that we might be able to hold fast to our confession, that we might be able to show the world exactly who you are by the way that we respond. We, we, we can't control what they do. We can't control what happens on the outside, but what we can control is how we respond and how we answer. I thank you, Lord, for giving us an answer. I thank you, Lord, for giving us a word in season, out of season. I thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be the oracles of God that speak on behalf of you Lord, what is right, what is just, what is lovely, what is a good report. I thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be able to propagate, to promote, to magnify who you are and what you do. So that as we lift you up, you can draw all men unto you. We thank you, Father. We give you glory. I want to stop right here quickly, and I want to give you an opportunity for all of you who are, are maybe watching for the first time, or you've been watching for a while, you've been connecting with us. For those of you who are abroad and you're outside of, of the Atlanta area, but you would like to connect with us, and you'd like to be a partner with the Catalyst. You'd like to come under watch care with the Catalyst. You want to join and connect with the Catalyst. I'm going to open up the doors of our cyber church right now and give you the opportunity to be partners and to join along with us. If you're interested, if you are, I encourage you to direct message the Catalyst at FTT, direct message us, DM us, so we can be able to connect with you. We can give you get your information. We can send you information on how you'd be able to be a partner, uh, get you uh, uh, information on how you can connect even the more, and for us to be able to talk about how how you can go through uh, our, our new members orientation and just be able to be a partner with this membership, with this fellowship of believers. I love the fact that the Lord has not relegated us to an area or to a space, but that he has called the gospel to go out through all the world. And the only way that it happens is that we have to have partners all over the world. So wherever you are, friend, if the Lord is calling you to be a connection partner with us, I encourage you to direct message us right now so we can be able to connect with you, so we can be able to share with you what the Lord has given us as an assignment to do, because we'd love to be able to help to include you or have you as part of the this body of believers also i want to give you the opportunity that if you want to sow into the work that's happening uh, once just again this week we had the opportunity to uh, sow food into the into into the hands of of some some amazing families uh, to sow food into the hands of people who absolutely need it. And uh, thanking the Lord for our partners uh, over at Grace, uh, for who considered us and, and our partners over at, uh, at, at Prevailing Love and, 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 and all the other ministries who are partnered with us, that as we continue to exchange resources and as we exchange information, that we help the gospel and we help the work of the Lord to go forth. So if you would love to be able to, if you'd love to sow into us, we'd love to have the opportunity to partner with you in seed, seed sowing. It's on the screen right now if you want to be able to know how to be able to give. And also, uh, we want to continue to ask you to pray for, pray for our nation. 
Pray for leaders across the board. Pray for a generation of leaders to rise up out of this youngest generation who have heard the deposit of the generations that have come before them, but who are aligned with the kingdom of heaven so they can speak clearly what needs to be said so they can rally a, a, a a, a trajectory of changing away in the direction so that it leaves a lasting effect for the generations who follow them. Listen, uh, I'm going to hand it over really quickly to Minister Lisa Smith. She's going to give you your announcements and then we're going to dismiss with uh, benediction. Mrs. Lisa, are you there? I'm here. Good morning. All right, Catalyst family, just a reminder of our announcements for the week. Um, Tuesday, June the 9th, we have morning prayer at 11 o'clock a.m. And our Bible study is at 7 o'clock p.m., which is also here on Facebook Live, also via conference call. Uh, as well, on Wednesday, we want to say a happy 16th birthday to uh, our little brother, Casey Ellis, turning 16. Amen. Also on Wednesday, uh, the Catalyst Youth Zoom meeting will be at 7 o'clock p.m. On Thursday, our Battle Tactics book talk with Pastor Vince on Facebook and Instagram um, at 7.15 p.m. Also on Friday, five minute uh, Fridays with Pastor Vince on Facebook at 5.30 p.m. And then also on Saturday, June 13th, Saturday night sound check, uh, 8.30 a.m. I'm sorry, 8.30 p.m. on Facebook Live and on Instagram. And then we'll see you back here again on Sunday for our Catalyst Morning Worship at 10.30 a.m. Uh, via Facebook Live and also via our conference call-in. All right, have a wonderful day. Glory, glory, glory. All right. I pray that you have grabbed what you needed for today and that you have some, some marching orders for the week. Uh, you have some soul searching, some, some word digging to do. You've heard the announcements. Uh, please make sure that you govern yourselves accordingly. And Pastor Gord is coming uh, to dismiss us. Listen, it is always our pleasure to be able to share this time with you. And again, for all of those who are connecting with us online, we're going to continue to broadcast. So we thank you so much for being partners with us, for just even taking the time to sit and to watch. You could be scrolling and, 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 and swiping anywhere else. Maybe you fast forward and you skipped right to this section. If you did, just want to say we are praying for you. We're praying for yeah. your families, praying directly for not just protection from, uh, from, from, from sickness, from disease, from turmoil, from issues, but more importantly, that the Lord continue to align you and your home, your family, your loved ones in alignment with you so that your vertical relationship helps to influence your horizontal relationships so that your dealings with people get to be able to be influenced because you allow the Lord to be king of your heart. Listen, we're excited to be able to share this time with you. And as we go through this next week, Here's some things to look forward to. Of course, you've already heard the announcements. Uh, you already know what's coming up. Uh, I'm going to specifically say this on Thursday when we do uh, my book talk. Uh, first of all, on Tuesday, uh, you're going to meet with Pastor T. Please do not forget uh, when you connect with uh, us on Tuesday, uh, make sure that you share that with somebody. But on Thursday, this Thursday, I'm doing the last chapter of my book, Battle Tactics. So I encourage you to be with me. And then if you want to be a part of the Zoom, I want to have after this Thursday, the very next Thursday, I want to host a great big Zoom with everyone who has a copy of the book so we can be able to just have a conversation and make it a group talk and make that our facebook live so i'm encouraging you if you're interested in doing that you can go ahead and direct message again either myself or the catalyst and say hey i'm interested or you can put it in the chat right here and say i'm interested so we can make sure that we send you an invite with the zoom credentials then on next uh of of course, on Friday, five minute Fridays, and then for this Saturday coming up for Saturday Night Soundcheck. If you all missed last night, uh, I'm going to post it on the Facebook page for the Catalyst. But if you missed last night, you can go check my stream and you can go ahead and see uh, our guest from last night, Ryan D. Rutley. It was an amazing connection, even with all the technical difficulties and all the issues that we had. The Lord still gave us a great opportunity to connect. The Instagram didn't come out that great, but you guys on Facebook, you guys got the best seat in the house. <laughs> So uh, I had to apologize to my Instagram family, but to my all my Facebook family, thank you so much for, for supporting, for staying connected, for sharing. Because this Sunday, come, uh, so this Saturday coming up, this Saturday coming up, my guest is 
Sheena Evans, worship leader over at Elizabeth Baptist Church. I'm excited to have her. She is uh, going to be with us this Saturday coming up. So I encourage you, look forward to that. Again, we love you guys. Uh, my prayer for you, of course, always is not this that the Lord keeps you covered, but as we depart from this place, that we never be separate from his place. So let's just go for, for our regular benediction. Now with the God of all grace, who has called us into his, into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, serve you. To him be glory and dominion forever. And all the Greeks said, Amen. We love you guys. Have a great evening.